He's Nicholas back. Yeah, I'm back again. Oh, yeah. Been a long time, hasn't it? For something like this. Okay, today we're back with the latest Puppy Linux. Slackware based, don't forget. And also Salix. Don't forget Salix. They get a bit upset if you leave them out. So it's actually called S15 Pup 64. So it's 64 bit. Remember, there is a 32 bit pup still if you've got really old machines and you need one. But most machines from like billions of years ago are 64 bit capable. So I'm going to have a quick look around for this one. Okay. This one comes with a different sort of desktop. It's not the old style, is it? No, no. You tell me what you think it is, and I'll tell you in the comments. Anyway, got a little taskbar at the top. So I've got a file manager. We've got our web browser. We've got a bit of chat, which is hex chat as far as I'm aware. Okay. Got the terminal. Or the terminal emulator. I'm going to click it. There you go. It's LX terminal. So you can actually see what it's actually using. You know, I don't have to explain everything to you anymore, do I? Most of you are watching this video will know what I'm talking about. What you will find uh, unusual is we're still using, okay, Abbey Word, yeah, really old Abbey Word, okay, 3.0.1. I mean, come on, it can still do the job, okay, it can still do the job. And if you've got a really old machine, say like the last video I've done, well, the one from July, okay, you've got a really old machine with only 2 gig of RAM and you can't upgrade it, this will do the job, no problem. We've also got G numeric. It will still do the job, okay? On top of that, we've got MT Paint, but Inkscape is also supplied. So let's get rid of that for you. And in here, we have our editor, which is Genie. Remember, you can install anything you want. Yes. Right, before we go any further, 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 not everything works correctly. There's a few little bugs I've got to work out. Remember, this came out in December, so I don't expect it to be totally super duper. Um, I've never been a, f a fan of the, the Slackware based ones. I've always been a fan of the Debian Stroke Ubuntu ones because there's so much more stuff that you can do. But we also get a little thing here for settings. And this is the pup control panel. I'm not going to go into this today. That's going to be for tomorrow's video. We're going to go straight into that and go through it with you. So you can decide whether you want to put it in a virtual machine or put it in, in a, an old laptop or an old desktop that you've got lying around. Remember, this sort of operating system is quite capable of doing basic stuff. Yeah, It is. It, it can do it. It's just up to you whether you want to put the time in. Bear in mind, it's free, but only free if you don't want to put your time. Okay. Here we have the Puppy Package Manager. This is where you can install it. Now, this is installed in a virtual box. I'm not going to lie to you. This is installed in a virtual box. I have got the old style puppy on a hard drive in the machine. And you'll see that later next week. And I'll go through it with you and stuff you can do to keep it up to date. Remember, it won't be totally safe. If you if you know what I'm saying. But it'll be safer than most things. So if I wanted to install applications, I can go here. And I can go to the puppy package manager. And we'll click on there. It will load it up for us. We're all updated. Yeah, we are all updated. But there's some certain things that aren't here and are here. So you, this is a difficult one. Not everything you want will be in the Slackware based stuff. Okay. But one thing I was really surprised, I'm going to type out for you now, a screen capture device. Now I've been using EasyOS for about 18 months now. And Barry decided to take simple screen recorder out and put in the old style one. It just doesn't work for me, and that's why I've not done any more videos on it. I suppose that's one of the depressing things why I stopped doing videos on it, on videos in total. They just took stuff away that I we we needed to use, and the one they replaced it with just didn't work. Okay, so if I do this, so simple screen recorder, it's there. Yeah, it's there. I went, wow, why didn't the other one? In? So if we click on it. We can actually install that if we want to. So if we do a step-by-step -step install. Yeah, we'll just do step-by-step. -step. And we're going to do that. And it's going to go for some stuff. And as you can see, it doesn't render too well. But remember, it's puppy. Come on. Yeah, come on. So it needs some stuff. Quite a lot of stuff. 
Shall we see if we can get all these? I've not done this outside this, okay? I thought we'd come and see if we can get it all. So we'll try and install the selected packages to see if we can actually install it. So install packages. I have updated everything, by the way. I've updated the package manager, so everything should work. So we go, boom. Let's see if it's there. Oh, that was good. That was good. As you can see from the screen blown, even if this was a, a hardware install, you would still get the same screen. It doesn't matter. It's just the way it works, to be honest with you. I'll have some apple juice, because you know I like a bit of apple juice. Lovely. It's adult apple juice, by the way. Mmm. Appley. Love it. And it seems to be getting all the dependencies that we actually need. Which I'm quite pleased with. And the speed here is quite good. No worries. Oh, by the way, we get fibre this year. <gasps> oh, that's going to be great. That's another reason why I, th I thought I'd start doing videos again, because I've got the access to that as well soon. So, it's doing some stuff now. I've allocated it a uh, 4 gig of RAM, but you could get away with 2, no problem. Now, I was playing around with it the other night, and this is what happened the other night. It gets a little bit stuck sometimes. Just stuck. And so I did, I just went and done something else. But what I'll do, I'll wait here with you, and you can see how long it's going to take. Oh, no, a bit more. Oh, need some more stuff. Okay. Obviously, from, from more repos. Yeah, a bit more. Oh, we're nearly there. Before, don't know package. Oh, yeah, it's got that too. Checking for missed libraries. Checking for everything. This is, this is looking quite good. I'm impressed. Mm. I mean, I really used to like Salix, and then all of a sudden it just stopped doing stuff that I needed to do, and I'd never used it again, to be honest with you. I mean, if you're like me and you've got lots of laptops around, lots of old desktops around, and you just play around, if something don't work, you just go to St. Kells. On another note, Dragonfly has got really, really good. Yeah, I know. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, we'll wait a little bit longer. It's still checking. Remember, it's not a hardware install. It's a virtual box install. The actual machine I'm using here is quite a few years old now. But hey, it still does what I needed to. Yeah. While we're waiting, what can I, else can I tell you? Okay. If we go into applications, I'm just going to wait for us to do this. Under desktop, yeah, straight out of Compton, we get a font manager. Pup clock set manager. We'll come to that in another video. A wallpaper setter. I've already changed that. This is not the uh, desktop wallpaper it comes with. X lock setup. P the me. Change graphic size on your desk. Oh, yeah, that's quite interesting. Choose your locale. P sync. Screensaver setup. Set date and time. I'm already synced via the internet, so I don't really need to do that. So that's quite good. We go to system. We get our boot manager. A CPU frequency scaling tool. It's still there from the old pub. IP info. Tell you what your numbers are. You know what I'm saying. Pup system info. I'm not going to show you that today, no. I'm just going to go through. Some basically stuffly, stuffly, stuffly. Uh, we can go to system update. Don't work too good. I was expecting more, but never mind. Pfft. I was too used to the Debian based one. Uh, video infographics. Look at that again. We'll get HTOP. We'll click on the HTOP. We'll move him over here. As you can see, the CPUs are going over the top. They're doing lots of stuff. But we're not actually using hardly any memory. Okay. So, as I said before, if you've got an older laptop, say around about 10 years old, this will do the job for you. So, if you've got kids at home and they just do homework or whatever, watch videos even, it will do the job. Not a problem. Go back to applications. I'm going to go to setup. Dependency checker. I'm going to go through that with you another day too. As for the package manager, again, another day too. SFS. Right, I've made a video on that already. Big fail, big fail, big fail. Your sound setup, it should all actually work straight away out of the box. But if it doesn't, you can go to the wizard and it will sort it out for you. Not a big deal. Um, you will need to change your screen size manually. Okay, It won't always go to the right resolution before you start. You can go to the monitor settings for that. 
Uh, don't forget to load Grub for DOS for your bootloader if you're not going to do it manually. Okay. You can do the pup installer. Well, I've done that already anyway, but you haven't seen it. You can remaster the puppy, so you can actually make the puppy your own and then remaster it and then put it on a USB stick, which has always been good with puppy. Utilities. Well, I'm not going to go through everything, by the way. Just some of it. I'm just going to leave it there so you can see. It's all there. File system. The graphical disk map doesn't work. Okay, it just doesn't work. Under graphics, GIMP actually works. I was impressed. Yes, very much so. So while we're doing stuff, and it's all doing them check-ins, I'm going to open GIMP. Because you can do it. Look. Right. It's not the most current version of GIMP, but it will do the job. You can upgrade it if you want to in the future. So, yeah, that's good. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Documents. Right, I've already got LibreOffice, but we're going to go through that in the second video. This is going to be a series of three videos on this part, so we can get around everything. Because I don't want to make them too long, because I'd get bored, and you'd get bored. You know what I mean? So there we go. Look, Gina works there, home bank, and a personal... Ah! The one I did want to open, and then it's going to be a completely separate video, is this one here. Bcrypt. Encrypt your files. Okay. It's been in PUP for as long as I can remember. Really, really long time. I don't know why most of shows don't actually put it in. Just a standard. I mean, there can't be no legal reason why you can't have it, as far as I'm aware. But hey. I like it anyway. Network stuff. Not going to do that today. Internet. Okay. You can get Chrome, which, funny enough, I got from the SFS file. Yeah, I just then had trouble getting other stuff, which is a pain up the backside. Multimedia. As you can see, oh, apparently it's already there. Hmm. Maybe it's just having a little hissy fit. Known players here. Double F Convert is a good media player. We're not going to do that today either. We're going to do other stuff. As you can see, I'm saying, I'm not doing that today. Yeah, I'm going to keep you guessing. P Music's a really good one. Um, there is a lacking a really, really good music player, but we'll try and get one for you. Under Fun, you just got Sudoku and X Invaders, whatever that is, and Yahtzee. If I go to Help, we'll click on Help, and it will show you some stuff. Here we go. So this is what we're running now. It's S15 Pup 64, released in December, so like last month, basically. And it shows you where you can go to do stuff. But the one I wanted to show you was this one here. Okay. Go to Notes, which is the best one. Some things to note about S15 Pup. It's built from 64-bit Slackware. Please remember, it's Slackware. Okay. It's not Debian. It's not Ubuntu. It's not Arch. So things are going to be a little bit different. Okay. The kernel was built without firmware. Keep that in mind too. Uh, the web browser supplied is lightweight. Yeah, it's very, very lightweight. That's why I installed Chrome and Firefox. Okay. But it does come with one. So if your machine is really, really like, lacking, it's fine. Okay. Uh, the development tools have been built without the kernel sources. Oh, I'm not liking that one. Okay. Oh, dependencies. The puppy Linux doesn't include some large infrastructure components, which may be dependencies of some extra add-ons. That's maybe why I might be having some problems getting stuff, doing stuff. So, yeah, that's okay. But, yeah, that's it. Now, I'm not even sure if that's done. See, it's not quite finished, is it? It's not quite there. It's just not. I was expecting a little bit more, but on the whole, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll have another look. But if I just click on there, and it's not going to let me, I don't think. Cause I've got flashing on the hard drive, but there's nothing happening. Yeah. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to call that a day. And we'll come back tomorrow and we'll see how we turned out. Sneaky Linux out. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.